Are you confused about which classes to sign up for? Well, in this video, we're going to give you a roadmap to success based on your goals. This is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll. Stay tuned. So what is a roadmap to success? It's basically choosing a path that's right for you. What are your goals? What are your high school requirements? Your community college requirements? Your four-year college requirements? All of these things play a big part and we're gonna be going over this. If you're interested in a, a very selective school, you really need to do the research ahead of time, sometimes as early as heading into high school. What about playing sports, the NCAA? What do they require? These are all things that you wanna plan ahead for. So consider your strengths, your weaknesses, the goals to determine the courses that you'll be taking. And you know, just to let you know, don't avoid certain courses because you think you're not as good in them because sometimes a certain a certain degree path or a certain goal that you have may require you to struggle through that course. So let's begin and let's talk about your high school curriculum. Where do you find that? Well, most high schools have a website and most high schools put their graduation requirements on them. If not, you can look at your state website, your state department of education, and they will give you a list. And this is good for homeschooling people as well as it's really good for people who want to build an alternative schedule. You might be taking some classes at your local high school. You might be taking some at your community college, and you might be taking some within a homeschool program. If you're doing those pieces, you still need to know what you need to graduate. So you want to locate that guide make sure you're fulfilling it. The worst thing, and I remember this from working in public school, was to have to sit down and let a student know that the courses that they took did not match what they needed and therefore they may end up having to take summer classes in order to graduate. You also want to note the differences in high school graduation requirements and the college prep requirements. The This is certain for students who are considering college. Even if you can't picture yourself at college, I personally went to college older and I went to a small enough school and, and we only had honors classes and, and the whole school was built on college prep. It's important for you because I do have students who are at small private schools or they are at very small high schools that don't have AP available to them. So just know what you need for college. And if you don't have AP available to you, do not panic. The colleges understand because they receive a school profile, which will let them know that your particular school may be small enough where you don't have that availability. You also want to check the NCAA website. I can't describe how important this is. You need to know who is in charge of the NCAA uh, in your school as far as putting in the courses that are being offered every year and having them approved by the NCAA. I have had students who have started working with me for recruitment in there at the end of their junior year and the beginning of their senior year. And we've discovered that the ninth grade science class, which was very a very good class, it had a lab and everything, was never approved by the NCAA. Fortunately, we were able to backtrack, send it there, but it's a, one person is in charge of doing that. So not only do you want to know what the requirements are for the NCAA, you also want to make sure you know who the person is who's in charge of that within your school. And you also want to make sure that you're taking the prerequisites that allow you to do certain things. You can't just jump into a calculus class. Most schools require that you do pre-calculus. 
So if you're going to be looking more towards the AP and honors classes, if that's where you're headed, it's important to know that honors classes, which you can usually take in ninth grade and 10th grade, oftentimes prepare you for that AP class that you should be focusing on. Also, AP and IB programs. You may or may not have program in your area that's IB. People have asked me, is it better than AP? Which one would you prefer? And honestly, it depends on the student and the student's interests. A school that offers AP and a school that offers IB, uh, it's just a, a whole different ball game, and we'll go over that in more depth in another short video. But they both are considered highly academic, especially if you score well. Both of them require tests. Many of the colleges have an expectation of a certain level or a certain score that you would be earning in order for them to consider it. So you want to earn extra grade points for AP and IB classes because most of them equal a five. So on a scale, a GPA scale, that it goes up to five, so that is called a weighted scale. If it's above a 4.0, you need to understand that if you take an AP class or an IB, you will end up getting a higher point weighting for your GPA. Some schools even weight honors. The school that I had worked with for seven years, we had weighted honors classes as well. So that was always really a good deal because it moves you up in your rank. If you're trying to move your rank up, if you're looking at an elite college or a high-end college or an Ivy League school or a school that's comparable to an Ivy League, then you're really going to want to take as many of those classes as you can. You also want to show that you you potentially can earn college credit. Why not go off to school and have 32 credits? I've had a lot of students do that. Many people get very caught up in the idea that what if the school doesn't accept these? Well, if the school is very academic, they may be just looking at your earned credits as a way of demonstrating that you're quite uh, that you've taken a very rigorous course load. And that's, you know, so that's what you need to take into consideration. And you have to remember, if you're a recruited athlete, the goal is not to leave school early. The goal is to create a situation where you're playing for four years. High school graduation requirements differ state to state. It is so important for you to understand that. But also, if you're looking to be recruited for a certain school, that's also something you need to look into. So here is, the slide shows a, a typical school. This is basically either a college prep or uh, below a college prep, just a standard requirement for certain states. Generally, we want English for four years, fine arts or world language. There are some states that require both. Health. Driver's Ed is not required, but you'd be surprised it counts as an elective in some areas. Mathematics, three, including Algebra one. Many states require that you complete Algebra two. Many states require that you take a senior year math, even if you have completed that. That's why it is so important for you to be looking at this. Physical education, you need to have so many credits within and also science. So many schools will state, okay, either three science classes and math or vice versa, three math, two science. Social sciences, world cultures or a world history will, will be required. U.S. history is absolutely required. Generally, people take it their junior year. Economics and government is now required. Some states actually require a test that you pass after that has nothing to do with your high school. It has to do with your, uh, with your state. And also some schools require technology. So that's important for you. The, the neat part is many schools actually have a tech course that's artistic and they count that. So that's kind of nice to have something like uh, photography. 
College prep requirements, as you're seeing on this slide, are a little more meaty. And on applications, many of them say, did your school require a college prep or have you taken college prep? And this is basically what you can be looking at to help you decide what that looks like as early as eighth grade when you're heading into ninth grade. This is important. They expect a two, at least two years of a language other than your own. They expect four years of English. Many of them expect a speech class, mathematics through algebra two, and also including four years. Laboratory science, you, can, you have to take sciences that have labs and you have to complete at least two. Their preference is when you're looking at a school that's requiring college prep or interested in students who have earned college prep credits, they're asking you to do three to four years of science. History, social studies, that includes US history. And of course, most places, most states are now requiring government and economics. Visual performing arts, there's that fine art that we're talking about. So either music or a fine art, an art class. Um, and also college preparatory electives, they require so much. This is basically what the NCAA is looking at. So if you are looking to do, especially a division one or division two school, this would be your, your screen that you would wanna follow. You would wanna take as many of these as you can to demonstrate that academically you are able to not only play at a division one school, but you are also able to academically keep up. It's called a student athlete, and that's what they're looking for. You want to stay on track. If you're struggling within the school, within this curriculum, it's important for you to reach out to your teacher. It's important for you to ask sooner than later for help. And that's the important part. And I see a lot of students who do that a little too late. So it's important for you, as soon as you feel like you're not understanding the coursework, to reach out for help, either uh, through the teacher, asking if you can come in, seeing if you can get extra time with the teacher, having something explained to you. All those pieces, keeping yourself organized writing out notes, rewriting notes, all those things will help you do better in these classes. You want to also look at what are what is your community college or your four-year college or your competitive four-year college or the NCAA sports you know, requirements. What do you need to be looking at? Don't just take things willy-nilly. Take it strategically so you're not wasting your time. So classes of interest in your high school's curriculum guide are, it's great to look at that, but be very careful to select the ones that are going to help you achieve your particular goals. You wanna ensure that you meet the prerequisites for each class, and you also wanna check off your requirements. Now, most schools require in ninth grade for a student to develop this plan, a course plan of action. Just understand that that is not a solidified plan, that as you grow and become more confident in your schooling and you want to try to take AP classes, it's okay to change your plan. Or you may be exposed through a summer, a summer event or you might be doing a volunteer event, anything like that where you've met someone who's in a certain career field and, and you now feel like, wow, I really wanna do that. So for example, if you helped at the animal shelter and you decided, I wanna do something with animals, make sure that you do chemistry. That's an important thing that you would want to do. So that's just a quick example. Okay, so stay on track, build your roadmap, if you like this video, if you have more questions, sign up for a free consultation. You can do that through our website, The Coaching Educator. If you feel like this would be helpful for other people, or if you have any other really interesting things you need to say about your journey with selecting curriculum, or if you have any questions, please just leave a comment. This is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll. See you next week.